Hello artists. In this video, I am going to help you begin painting your color wheel and teach you some of the color theory vocabulary that will be important to your understanding of how to mix certain colors with paint. The color wheel that you have is very complex. There are lots of different areas that you are going to fill in. First, you're going to start with the basic color wheel, which has six colors. Those colors are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. The colors of the rainbow. By now, you know that primary colors are red, yellow, and blue, and they're primary because they cannot be made, but together they make the secondary colors. And the secondary colors are orange, green, and purple. So to start, you're simply gonna fill in your primary colors on the color wheel with the colors from your palette. Your three primary colors are the cadmium red, cadmium yellow, and ultramarine blue. Do not use the cerulean blue as your primary color because when you go to mix your secondaries, you're gonna find that it doesn't look right. So I'm gonna simply paint these three colors into my color wheel. When you are painting, and this piece of printer paper is not an ideal painting surface, but you should still try to focus on paint application and being neat. When you dip your brush in the paint, you're gonna have too much paint on your brush to paint on a thin piece of paper in a small area like this. So you're gonna use your piece of palette paper to get rid of some of the paint from your brush so that when you go to paint into your color wheel, you can have a nice flat area of color that's not chunky and sloppy. Neatness counts. I personally prefer using some type of brush that has a flat tip because you can almost use it on its side like this to create nice clean lines. If you're using a brush that has a much rounder tip and the bristles are round, you're gonna find that it's very hard for you to achieve a straight line or a nice clean edge. When switching colors, you need to clean your brush or use a new brush, but you don't want to end up with 50 brushes at the end of a painting session. So to clean your brush, you are going to use a cup of water. This may sound silly, but I feel the need to tell you that when washing your brush in your can, you need to press the brush all the way to the bottom of the can so that you're actually creating friction and the paint comes off of the bristles. Once you've swished it around against the bottom of your can, you can then use a paper towel to dry it off and get rid of any excess paint. You may feel the need to do that more than once and that's okay. The cleaner your brush, the cleaner your palette will stay and the neater your color wheel will be. Cleaning your brush is how your palette is going to stay super clean so that all of these colors don't get mixed together. Remember, ultramarine is your primary blue. Please excuse the interruption. Penelope Salas, please report to the gym lobby. Penelope Salas, please report to the gym lobby. Now 
I'm trying to be neat and get into all my tiny corners, sometimes it's better to move your paper or your painting surface than it is to wiggle your wrist into these impossible <laughs> positions. All right, so I filled in my three primary colors. Again, they're primary because we can't make them. Our paint palette starts with these three colors because they cannot be mixed. We can't make a red. We can't make blue and we can't make yellow. But together, these three colors make the three secondary colors. And the color wheel is set up in such a way that you can't possibly forget how to make them. So if we mix red and yellow, we're gonna get orange. And if we mix yellow and blue, we're gonna get green. And when we mix red and blue, we're gonna get purple. Please remember that on the traditional color wheel in the rainbow, you should never add anything other than a primary color. So a primary plus a primary equals a secondary. You should not be adding white, you should not be adding black, you shouldn't be adding anything at all except for those two primary colors. What you're gonna find with these paints that we use is that the strength of the pigment varies from one color to the next. So yellow, which you've probably already noticed by painting it on your piece of paper, is very weak. You can see right through it, it's pretty translucent. The blue and the red, not so much. They're a little stronger, a little darker when you paint them on your piece of paper. So when you mix them together, you might think green would be a 50-50 mix of yellow and blue. However, this is not the case with the particular paint that we are using. Because yellow is so weak, the ultramarine is going to dominate the color mixing so if we did a 50-50 mix, you're gonna get something that still looks very blue. You want a green color that looks totally different from blue and yellow, and I'll show you what I mean by this. I'm starting with green because it's the easiest of the secondaries to make. So I'm gonna take some yellow. This is where you're probably gonna to wanna to use multiple brushes. I'm gonna take some yellow and then I'm gonna use some blue. I want there to be more yellow than blue because blue is going to dominate the color mixing. So I have a significant amount of yellow, a little bit of blue. I'm gonna mix it together and see what happens. Definitely not the most attractive shade of green. So now I can already tell before this is even completely mixed that I didn't use quite enough blue. I was being a little too conservative. So now I'm gonna add a little bit more blue to this green. Make sure when you're mixing, you mix all of the paint together. Don't just mix a little bit and assume it's too dark or too light or too, too yellow or too blue needs to be fully mixed like this. I'm gonna do that one more time with the blue. Again, by using two brushes, I'm keeping this paint in my palette clean and nice. This is looking better. You don't want it to look more blue or more yellow. It needs to be right in the middle. And I think I have achieved that. So now I'm gonna paint this color in my green section. could have added a little bit more blue. If you did, your green will just look a little bit darker than mine. And that's okay, as long as it doesn't start to have a hint of blue to it. Now that we've started mixing, you're gonna find that even if you're trying to be super neat, when you apply the paint, it's harder to get clean brush strokes. So really focus on the way that you're painting in your section to make sure the whole shape looks like it's the same value. You don't want one half to be super dark and one half light because you used way more paint over here and less over here. It should be one flat color. 
So I'm gonna use the same process to create orange and purple. Where I'm gonna mix my two primaries together to create the secondary. I'm just remembering that the yellow is really weak. So when I go to make my orange, I'm gonna to wanna to use more yellow and less red because the red is gonna dominate the color mixing, just like the blue dominated when I created the green. Again, make sure you mix it all together. Red is actually the strongest pigment in the entire palette. Like it didn't, doesn't even look like it changed. So I need a lot more yellow. Now let me teach you all a trick in order to save you some time and some paint. Instead of continuing to add tons of yellow to this until it becomes orange, it's gonna change a lot faster if I just move some of this over here and then add my yellow to it. Otherwise I'm wasting a lot of paint and it's taking me longer because I have to mix more together. So now I still have some red over there and I can continue mixing an orange. You can see just how strong that red paint is. It takes a lot of yellow to create this orange. You don't want your orange to be too red because if it is, you're never gonna be able to achieve other colors on the color wheel eventually. So make sure you get something that is really in between red and yellow and doesn't still look like it has a red tint to it. I'm gonna add yellow one more time. So it's definitely different from my red now. Doesn't look like too mac and cheesy, that would be too yellow. What's really nice about this palette is now I've mixed these colors so later I can reuse them without having to make them again. So if I felt like after these sections of my color wheel dry and they look sloppy, I can go back and paint another coat right on top and I didn't even have to take the time to remix the color. Lastly, I have purple. Purple is challenging because it is so dark. And this is simply just because of the brand of paint that we're using. We're mixing them together. But remember, you don't wanna add any white here because you'd be contaminating that secondary color. It would no longer be simply secondary, it would become with a tint, which we'll discuss later. To get purple, I'm mixing red and blue. And I know that because sits in between them on the color wheel. These were both pretty dominant colors. So this is gonna be more of an actual 50-50 mix to get the purple, but I'm gonna show you how it gets challenging because it's so dark. Some of you are going to think, did I just mix black? Some of you are going to think it looks brown. A trick I can show you is if you get very minimal paint on your brush and then you test it in your palette so there's less paint, you can see the color much better. I actually think I achieved almost a perfect purple on the first try. I'm going to add just a tiny bit more blue. If it looks brown, that means the red is dominating the color mixing, and so you should add a little bit more blue. The brown, is, it looks like a maroon color, and that's because it's too red. This is better. My purple is gonna go here. The more coats of purple you paint on this piece of paper, the darker it's gonna get, and the harder it's gonna be to see your color. So really try to make this space super neat so that you don't need more than one.
if you start to make some mistakes and you painted outside of the lines, have no fear. Although you cannot erase paint, you can paint over anything. <laughs> so you can touch it up later as you move around. So congratulations, you have now created the traditional color wheel with primary and secondary colors.